Well, hello there. My name is John Meyer. A few weeks ago, I introduced a songwriting competition, and that competition is coming to an end on Monday, June 28th at 11.59 p.m. Central Time. I'm in Texas, so we're just going to go by Texas time. If you go to johnmeyermusic.com backslash scoring competition, you can see all the rules. You can also watch a video from a few weeks ago that explains it in much more detail. But today, what I want to do is talk about how you can compose for this competition, even if you've never done it before. This is very much a beginner's guide. My nephew Hudson, who is 12 or 13, I should probably know the answer to that. Well, he started playing the viola recently, and he's really getting into it. So I talked to him about composing, and he has an old Mac that was handed down to him from my father. And so he's got the tools to create. And what I want to do is walk through really quickly how you can take the video that I made, load it into some software, get some sounds, and start creating. There are so many inexpensive options to get into recording music, but there's also some free options, or at least some that have long trial periods. And there's one particular software that I've been wanting to learn for a long time, and it's called Reaper. And I have very little experience with this, so I'm going to fumble around Reaper. And some of you who are familiar with Reaper are going to watch my video and just be frustrated. Hopefully I can communicate this well enough to get someone who has no experience up and running and creating in a short amount of time. If you visit reaper.fm, you can click download Reaper, and that will take you to this page where you can download the appropriate software for your machine. I'm not going to go in detail here. Hopefully you know how to download stuff or someone who does can help you. This is what Reaper looks like when you first open the software. It's blank. And first thing we're going to do is load in our video. So we'll go back to johnmeyermusic.com. If we scroll down, we get to contest rules, download the MP4 file here, click there. I've already got it, so I'm not going to do that. And the easiest way to get that video in is to navigate to where you are storing your video on your hard drive. In my case, I have John Meyer scoring competition. And I'm going to take this and I'm simply going to drag it in. And now we have our video. And notice we don't have video, we simply have audio. So we want to view that video. I'm going to go up to view. And when I go here, I can do shift command V or click on video. And here is my video. Pressing minus and plus will zoom in and out so you can see the whole thing. You can click on the timeline. I had been drifting for days. And navigate your way around. Now that we have a video track inside of Reaper, it's time to start making our music. But we still need some software to make that work. We need what's called a sampler. And for the instrument that I made recently called the Meyer Felt, it requires Contact, which unfortunately is the paid version of Contact, and it's rather expensive. It's a couple hundred dollars now, maybe $300, and uh, it's most often bought as part of a larger pack of instruments, which is six, seven, eight hundred dollars My initial idea was to have you all use only my sounds to score this picture that I've made. But that's not cool because you have to own Contact. Now, I do think Contact is a good investment because there are tons of developers like myself and for reasons that are much bigger than this video, uh, it's difficult to make it to where it can be part of the free contact player. I'll link to a video by a guy named Stephen Tallamy who explained this much better than I ever could. So go, go check that out if you have questions as to why it requires expensive software to get up and running. But fortunately for us, there are other options. And one of those is called Decent Sampler. You go to Google and type in Decent Sampler, this pops up. And Decent Sampler was created by my friend David Hillowitz, who has a fantastic channel on all kinds of stuff, synthesizers, programming instruments, creating. He's just a brilliant guy that makes really educational and entertaining videos. So go check his stuff out. He also has some samples on here that you can that you can download for free and some that you can buy. But we're gonna start with the sampler. So just like with Reaper, download the one that makes the most sense for your machine, which I have already done. And once you go through the installation process, you go back into Reaper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a track and I'm going to insert what's called a virtual instrument on a new track. So a virtual instrument is the name that we use for these uh, external pieces of software that we can load into Reaper or Pro Tools or Logic that, we, that are instruments created by developers that we can play. Was that a good explanation? I don't know. Just click on this button. So now this pops up. And this gives us the option to load in these instruments. Now I have a ton because I have been doing this for years and I've spent way too much money on all this. So normally I might load in contact, but what we're gonna do here is decent sampler is right there, but you can search for it. I'm honestly not sure which version you should pick, but I'm gonna go with the audio units version, the AU. And so this loads up and now I have my decent sampler ready to go. I can browse 
And now this is David's store, so you could go buy these instruments. He also has some free instruments, I believe, that we could get. We also have my libraries, and what I have here are a handful of instruments that I have downloaded. And I got these from a site called pianobook.co.uk. This is the coolest site on the internet. I have created some sounds, and this is how I got started into the world of sampling, was creating sounds for this community. And there's so many people all over the world who are doing this on a regular basis. And there are amazing, amazing sounds. And so what you can do is go and search through the library and find them. And let's just go to choir. Now, if I go to choir and I pick one of these, let's say this FOF choir matrix, I can scan down and listen to the sound, watch a video about it. I don't know what's going on there, but it's really cool. And then in the download section, there's a Contact 6 version and a Decent Sampler version. So you can only download the ones that are for Decent Sampler. There's an excellent video, 100 free instruments. You don't need Contact 4, Christian Henson Music, put this out. And there's other things. Now, parental advisory, so my 12-year-old nephew or 13-year-old nephew maybe watch this with mom and dad. But there's some great stuff here. And there's a, a guy named... I want to give credit where credit's due. Fred Curier converted so many of these instruments to Decent Sampler. So once I've got those downloaded, I can go through and look at what I have. So we'll start with this box violin, which is an instrument made by David. He, he has a great video about how he made this. Okay, now. I have a keyboard plugged in, which you can kind of see, and this keyboard is what I use, and I have installed that to the computer. Now, if you don't want to do that or you can't do that, one of your options is to go back into Reaper and go to View Virtual MIDI Keyboard. This turns your computer keyboard into a MIDI keyboard. And MIDI is a word we use that's the language of zeros and ones and all that stuff that tells these instruments what to play. I'm gonna fast track you on this just so you can get some sound down. But let's look at here where it says C4 in the, in the center there is Q, all right? That's middle C, okay? And that's kind of important in music theory. So when I have this set up, I can click on these notes and it will play. And now if I go to my transport controls over here and I go back to the beginning, and I hit the record button. I had been drifting for days. After a while, I lost count. I've lived here my whole life. I can save those notes. Now, that's not the most beautiful piece of music that I've ever written. But what's neat about this is I can go in and click on this and then move my mouse around. And now I can draw in notes. Here's my keyboard. And I can see that I'm, I had a C. I can put those notes right here. And I can play back. I had been. Now, that note has what's called a long sustain. And so I'm gonna take this note and I'm gonna play it at the same time. I had been. We'll get rid of these notes. So I've got this. If you're, if you're totally brand new to this and you just wanna make something, listen to this note put it on C and then I want you to adjust this note up and down and listen to the sound that you get from just these two notes and they're super close together like that it gives you a certain feeling That's what's called a minor third, and it feels different than this.
Okay. This is all music theory stuff that you can dive into and you have all the time in the world to learn it. But I want you to get into here and just hear the difference when you put these two notes together and spread them out and listen to the sound that you get when they are close together and when they're far away and just see if that makes you feel a certain way. I can hold down the command key on the Mac, which I don't know what that is on uh, PC. And now I can move, make a copy of that note. So I could add another note on top of this. Or I could move it after. I had but what I encourage you to do is hold this note out for as long as it can, and then move these around. I had been drifting for days. After a while, I lost count. What I can do is kind of move this out of, way, out of the way and click back over to my main window. I guess I just close that down and go to my main window. And if I don't like that sound, I can go when I'm on this channel, when this pops up, I can go to browse and I can change it out with this orchestra that I've downloaded that my friend Dan Keen made. I had been drifting for days after a while I lost count so I can take this track and I can solo it up so you can just hear it we'll turn dynamics up and maybe a little more advanced you get into controlling these but right now we're just gonna leave that up And notice that low C that we had here, it died out after a while. So we would have to trigger that note again so we could find out where it died out and we could use our command key and drag that over and maybe that will trigger it again. With just a few notes, I've made something that conveys an emotion. Now, let's see what other sounds we might have in that spot. Ooh, let's do frozen textures. This is Winter Voices. This is a really cool project that a bunch of people, including myself, contributed to. I had been drifting for days. After a while, I lost count. Hey, we've just scored this picture and you can do that just as quickly and just as easily as I just did. Now, there's gonna be issues. There's gonna be, you're gonna run into all kinds of roadblocks. Just search things on Google to figure it out. But the barrier to entry to recording music now is so low. And there are so many talented people making incredible things that we can all use for free that there's no excuse to not get started. Now, the music is the most important thing. And I just barely touched on that. But you have time to learn that. And that's a lifelong pursuit. But getting started technically, not all that tricky and not expensive at all if you have a computer. Now, Eventually, you're going to want to get all the stuff like I did, but I've been buying this stuff for 25 years. It's not like I just started yesterday. So start with this. Start small. Write a piece of music. Send it to me. I want to hear it. Uh, if this is your first day, you're competing against people that have been writing music their whole life, uh, you might not win. But the experience is what matters. And every single time that I sit down to write something, I learn something and I get better. So if you have questions, Put those in the comments. Maybe some people can jump in and help you. And also maybe in the comments, if you're still watching this and you're experienced, you could help point people to some places where they can also learn. Because one of the hardest things about navigating YouTube and the internet is that there's so much incredible stuff to learn from, but it can be hard to find. So help each other out in the comments. 
Submit your entry by Monday, the 28th at 1159 p.m. Central Standard Time, and I will announce the winner soon. Take care.